the Shaiba Arena is shining again today on day two of the Paralympic Winter Games in Sochi. This is the ice sledge hockey competition being played inside that beautiful venue, and this is inside. As you look what's coming in store today in Group A in this preliminary round, it's the Czech Republic and Sweden. And there you see, in day one, both of these sides suffering a loss, so it's an opportunity for one of these sides today to get in the win column. As you look at the standings in Group A, Canada sit atop at the moment with three points, a regulation win over Sweden, 10-1 to one in day one. And the Czech Republic with a very difficult loss against the Norwegians in a game-winning shot scenario in day one at the Scheibe Arena. And there are the Czech players in red preparing themselves to get out onto the ice and try and put right what they couldn't in day one of the competition. The Swedes, though, aren't as big in numbers. They only have nine skaters and two goalkeepers as well as we look at the officials. And Samulov from Russia, the referee, linesman Clark and Klochkov from Canada and Russia, respectively. And they will be in charge of today's contest. If you're just looking at ice sledge hockey for the first time, we have three 15-minute periods in store. And if we're level, as we saw twice in day one, we will go to an extra time period of five minutes only in the preliminary round. And if still tied, then we go to the game-winning shot scenario. And some tremendous drama we've seen already in this tournament. As you look at Vapenka, who will get the start, Safranek the captain, and Gear ones to watch up front, Yuri Berger as well on the blue line. But Vapenka yesterday, really hard done by in day one. And this is Janssen. Janssen will get the start in goal. Ingvarsson as well, D-man to keep an eye out, and Kaspari in day one gets himself the goal, the only goal of the match when the Swedes took on the Canadians. And there the Czechs are ready. This is their coach, Yuri Briza. And he's come up through the program, has been an assistant coach with the Czech national program, and now officially head charge and the coach for these Sochi games. Lundgren has got a boy that plays on the team as well. Rasmus Lundgren, a defenseman carries a lot of ice time as well for this side but getting back to Vapenka Vapenka lets in one goal in day one there you see the 1.80 goals against average and that was in regulation time and it looks it mentioned that we had Janssen in goal but that's Nielsen who's going to be getting the start for Sweden he started yesterday there in day one, and he was then having to be removed after two periods of play. And then in favor, brought in Janssen. And you see the captains exchanging penance, and that's Olia, who the captain of Sweden, and Sopranic for the Czech Republic. He's very much involved with his team and making sure to encourage them, giving them constant instruction and guidance. And Nielsen, as we thought, will get the start for Sweden in goal. And just moments away from day two action at the Scheibe Arena. The arena nicely filling up as this one's just set to lift off. Semilov drops the puck, and off we go. Sweden in the gold and blue from right to left. The Czech Republic in the red with blue and white trim from left to right. They're back in their own defensive zone now, and they run out of real estate there. Some good body contact going on quickly in this one. And the Swedish player, Helm, 
having to recollect his stick and get that under control before he can advance the puck. It's now into the neutral zone. And it's a 50-50 opportunity, but it's going to be won by the Czechs. And that is going to be a dispossession gear, though. Right hard in on Lundgren. Lundgren does well, though, just to turn and protect that puck. He didn't quite get enough on it over to Kasperi. Kasperi, though, whips it back in the same direction and tries to find a line. Sweden, though, just controlling this here and not forcing themselves into a turnover. Turned out front. This is a scramble. And Nielsen sees that go back into the corner. And Sweden seemed to elect to want to play this management style, but you can't play it for long, just spending needless time in your own zone. Safranic can't get it past the Swedish defender, Lundgren, and Lundgren, he'll be out there a lot. Number 11 today for Sweden. And it's over to the near side. And they will get it forward. Good work from the Swedes. That'll be offside, though, is advancing. And now the other way, partially a window opening for the Czechs, but they can't make anything of the play. And now Sweden will come back. Kasperi, oh, he's just found a way right through the wickets. It looked as though he was going to be closed down. And there are a number of players on the ice there for the Czechs, but they are okay and resuming play. Wide side, steady build up. A delayed offside, though, as the stick has been lost by the forward on the Czech Republic side, and he's taking a while to get himself out of the zone. Again, this is still a delayed offside. This will be blown now that the play has been developed and Rawl comes in and makes the contact. And as a result, the whistle's blown. There's Berger in a big collision already with Wojtek. And this one here with Kaspari as well. Zafranek. He on this line. And Zafranek with Gear and Havel. A real handful for any defense. There's a pair of shades for you. And good move across by Kavak, the trade mechanic in his day job in the Czech Republic. It's turned over. In behind goal. And it's just reached out again. The Czech's not as measured at the moment as they can be with their passing and control they come in waves and now they are just bumped off the plate there's going to be a penalty coming though against Sweden and it looks as though it's being indicated as a holding penalty and Samulov is the official going to be giving Lundgren at two minutes for holding, we'll watch it here now as he grabs the man and ends up knocking him off the play and that's Kubis, the defenseman, stepping forward. So we'll see exactly, it is holding that Rasmus Lundgren will receive. So now the power play. We'll see exactly what the Czechs have in store today. Laid on, and they can't connect the pass. And immediately having to go back into the neutral zone to try and reset this offensive structure. Sweden do a very good job on the penalty kill. We've seen that already. Nielsen just collects that. Ingarsen around. Just keeping it to these boards and away from the middle of the ice where is the most danger is likely to come from. And that's where they like to keep the play. It'll go around the boards here, kept in by Berger. Berger on that right point position, prefers to shoot with the left hand though. 
and it is one and it's going to be a penalty coming back against the Czech Republic. They were on the power play. And again, the referee blowing his whistle. And we'll see exactly what the call will be this time. And it's a hooking call. And just reaching around here. And again, quick to blow the whistle so far, Samulov. Yuri Rall. And I've we've seen worse already in this tournament, not called. So Samulov wanting to put his fingerprints on this match early. Four on four play, shot from the outside. Through the middle, this is a chance to get on the end of it. Here's their partial break. There won't be Nielsen's out there just to see it to safety. And Nielsen with that ever assuring, almost casually defiant style in goal for Sweden. Back they come with Kaspari into the offensive zone and Kavak just gives him a good old dumping right off the play as he just cuts them off and now Kavak will just move it around still haven't quite got it under control though as Havel is in the corner and unable to come up with possession Kaspari is ever pursuing though and he is on the ice pretty well the majority of the game though for Sweden expect that again today Good offload from Kavak. Shot, what a play. In on goal. And from the outside, quickly inside with that long-range effort coming in. And particularly with the Czech player going right to the face of goal. It's forced the Swedes to take an icing. I think it was Havel who was going to the net. And Havel almost, almost has his stick just tucked in along his side rather than having the open face ready for the rebound and it just gets past him. Lundgren looks on from the Swedish bench. And Sweden with the opportunity now on the power play and from the outside Nielsen will have to reset as the face-off won by the Czech Republic. And again, they're not afraid to shoot it from a distance, are they? And there's nothing wrong with it. They scored a tremendous goal in day one. It's Mikael Gier. And he scored one from the top of the left circle across the face of goal and high into the corner of the net. And it'll be the kind of goal you'll see for a while on Paralympic footage. Here they come, though, Sweden. Out in front. Did he put it too far away, Kasparri? And the race to it is won by Motika. And that's an important play. And Sweden with the advantage, the extra player on the ice. And I think Kasparri, Kasparri just puts that a little too far, doesn't he? He gets that away from him and can't get back in control. And Motika with a great play. Loose now. <laughs> Again, can't help but smile at just how easy Nielsen makes it look. Oh, stick work developing here. Kubas, the defenseman in. And Nielsen down. Puck is still loose and alive. In behind the goal, and it is quickly banked into a safe area again and it will make its way out. And coming forward, advancing it, Kaspari, one-on-one -on -one from the outside, and there's a save from Bapenka as he gets asked the first real question of the day in the Czech goal, and he has the answer with ease. You're watching the Paralympic Winter Games. I'm Brent Pope, and I hope you're enjoying this coverage of the Czech Republic and Sweden in day two. And match number two for both of these teams in Group A. And the other teams in this group, Canada and Norway. So work cut out for both of these sides here. There you see Yuri Breza 
chatting with his team. This was the play a moment ago from Kaspari. And not long for him just to release that shot off the side of his sledge. And that's a great cut in there. Another good look at the angle of it. And the backhand just going off the near netting as Nielsen who's in decent position. And so give you an idea of Nielsen's tournament so far. A 68.18 save percentage and a 10.50 goals against. So after two periods in day one against Canada, he had conceded seven goals. And those are the sort of statistics that appear in the stats column in day two ahead of this one. It's one, Sweden, going to step to the inside. It's blocked, though, as quickly the Czech defense is formed, and they're able to block it away out to the blue line, but not cleared. And then again, it'll make its way now. Sweden on a delayed offside. We'll all leave the zone before they retreat. Lavak doesn't quite time the bounce there and hasn't got it out. And these plays have just did clear, as you see now, the referees indicating the delayed offside but those plays that don't look like much of the time sometimes can be ones that not only lead directly to a goal but indirectly and it's just about managing the puck as best they can this guy does it extremely well here is Kasperi again he'll offload and deliver up and Kasperi in his second Paralympic Games makes his debut in Vancouver and he is 20, turning 21 in May. So great experience already for the youngster, Per Kasperi. To the far side, this is Zafranek, the captain, who just lays it off, a good overlap. As the defense are supporting well. Here's Kubas out front, and it goes whistling wide of Nielsen in the Swedish goal, past the right post, it's into the corner. And Hjalm will come back to See if he can't marshal at the safety in the opposite corner. It'll come back the other way, a little bit like a yo-yo as both corners feeling the presence of both attacking and defending players on this shift. It will make its way though just through a errant reception. And the checks will go back again. Line changes ever so a tactical part of ice sledge hockey. And it has gone too far and away as it crosses the far goal line. And that'll go for icing. And icing for those who aren't familiar with the rules in ice hockey, equal to they are in ice sledge hockey, as you see a play being explained by Yuri Brizak. And this was a shot that just goes past the post from Kubis, the assistant captain, and the D-man stepping up into the play. But I think basically designed to prevent the clearance of the puck without due attention and responsibility to trying to make a play out of your own zone. And you end up, as a result, having a face-off in your own zone. And that's where the checks are right now, with the puck about to drop to the left. Uh, Vapenka, the referee not happy that they were in position in time. And Zafranek will come in to compete for this draw, and it's one. Taken back into the corner. Kavok taking his time to get in there, and he's upended now. And Kavok, he's a veteran back there for the red and blue. 47 years of age. As we have an opportunity just to catch our breath for a moment. No score as of yet. Sweden and the Czech Republic in day two. There they are cleaning and preparing so the players can see Brisa back and in positive spirit after that difficult game-winning shot scenario and Lundgren really 
delivering his message. Wanting to make sure he's been appointed to this role as a Swedish Paralympic ice sledge hockey coach in 2011. And he was the assistant to the Swedish team at the 2010 Paralympic Winter Games in Vancouver. But now, he's the man in charge. And Sweden, the country who invented the sport of ice sledge hockey, is going through a little bit of a transitional time. They actually referenced, and they finished eighth in Vancouver, and they qualified eighth for the Sochi Games. And with a difficult loss to Canada in day one, they know they're playing for their classification lives, really. Of course, you never know in sport. As Kasperi is on, immediately putting pressure across the face of goal. But Penka takes that one safely in. And he just lays on his side. He needs a beach towel, and he would have been very comfortable indeed. Lundgren. And that's the play. It's actually a great extension from Vapenka. And Lundgren wanting more from his Swedish side to try and generate more offense. Vapenka just puts it into an area. Onto it first, but it's going to get away. And this is a little bit fractured, is this first passage of play so far for the Czechs. They have shown more offensive flair in these games thus far, and they haven't really been able to connect their passes in this first period. Fans having a great time in Sochi for the Paralympics, as they did for the Olympics as well. It's been a tremendous festival of sport. Again, Vapenka just reaching back. And Kasperi, not too far away where the puck is at any given time. He makes certain that Vapenka has it entirely in his possession, or he will have been the first man to the scene. Apple to take this drop. Czech Republic win it well. Oh, the intention was to go up and over Kubas. That's a set play as they had a forward releasing out of the zone. And Kubas was going to elevate it with the view that they were maybe going to catch the Swedish blue line out. They haven't got many players, Sweden. And I was mentioning there before, they almost accept that it'll be the next game in Pyeongchang in Korea where they're more likely to have greater depth and more depth and quality to be able to really compete at the Paralympic level. To the standing of, well, a country of the proud heritage of ice hockey and ice sledge hockey, like Sweden has. It was the 60s that the game was first started to be played in Stockholm at a rehabilitation center, and then in 69, officially a proper game between the Norwegians and the Swedes. And then the sport has grown from there and evolved and taken a natural development to where it is today. When you speak to any of these athletes, the game of ice sledge hockey at the best it's ever been in Sochi. Equipment is better, players are in better condition and more time and ability to focus on their skills and really commit as this offside play, Wojtek trying to provide a little bit of a screen. Oyala just dumps him off the play and it's actually the puck not getting through Wojtek that forces this offside. And Kavak needs to be careful. He is across the Kubis. This play is a good one. Developing nicely. Oh, the defensive play by Ingvarsson. He was the last man. This is going to be Kaspari and one more time. It's just a bridge too far. And Kaspari comes bouncing into the corner there. And a 
A little bit of an exhale of frustration there. And one more time. Again, the passing in this period is less than precise. The grizzled veteran, Nielsen, looks on from the Swedish goal. 49 years of age. A goaltending. Here they are in front, and Nielsen showing every bit of his experience there as he just lays down and makes it difficult for the Czechs to get it up and over him, take away the bottom half of the net quickly, and take your chances. And that's Havel, who can't get much further than. Nielsen's pads, and he takes that into his midsection for another faceoff. Working well again. Sweden so reliant on making these good defensive plays. Kaspari doesn't take a breather. Very little if he does. Out there again, forcing the issue. They haven't really got anybody to replace. He must play and continue home in the other corner. The rare shift for Nicholas Rakos, number 20, in front. Lopenka, again. Good work there from Rakos, and maybe did him a discredit there. He's actually got quite a few minutes so far in this opening period. As we just have a look at the time on ice stats, and just updating as we watch this play. And why not? A cheeky little chance from in behind the goal line. And ask the question of Apenka if he's ready. Apenka is ready this time. And he'll play it on before the referee can blow the whistle and stop play. It's just being seen past his right post. Or left as he would be looking out, Nielsen. And that man, he can open the scoring in a moment. Mikhail Gear. Again, the instruction and guidance constantly being provided by Frieza on the bench. He's got a good relationship with his players. And as much as he is really trying to communicate his message, you get the sense that he's also their biggest fan. in deep now it'll come around these boards and to the advantage of the checks it's not going to go for icing they can get to it lundgren trying to control his man lundgren going to be bumped off by sopranic sopranic just comes in almost in a panic there like he was arriving back at the base and the alarm was sounding and he had to get back and see what was going on. This is good work, but it's again disconnected play. Oh, a turnover though. Kasperi has left a loose opportunity, and that is uncharacteristic indeed. It's still being kept in, and Kubas will just see what's available. An offload to a better position, and Havel can't get his stick on that. Kavok now. This is better from the checks. Slow and still measured. But at least daylight in on goal. Controlled, released from the zone by Kaspari. And he will get away from a couple check defenders, but he'll have to just release that puck into an area. Kubis now behind it. And a little bit of a one-two, but Kaspari on it. And he does a three right back at Kapenka. Kasperi trying to see if he can't rattle the pots and pans in this Czech kitchen late in this first period as we're inside the last minutes. And so deceptive and intricate is this stick handling and ice sledge hockey where they can go back end to forehand on both hands. 
So almost four different looks in which they can show you on their stick handling. And that can really create a difficult to manage defense against these individually world-class skilled players. Ingrassen needs to be careful there. Nielsen just one more time. Just paddles it away like he's a, a rudder on a pinball machine. From the outside of the net. And that is going to be the end of the first period. And it picked up in the last couple of minutes. Not a whole lot of activity leading up into that stage. But the shots at the end of the first period, the Czechs with five, Sweden with four. And you see both sides collecting themselves. The scoreline remains zero apiece. When you look at the face-off winning percentage, the Swedes a little bit better, just over 55% win ratio on those face-offs we had a couple penalties back and forth that were exchanged but they were almost kind of simultaneously eliminating of each other and then just a, a little bit of partial opportunity for sweden to go on the power play late in that advantage and that's where it is now, both these teams in day two desperately needing something from this match to give them an opportunity to compete still to try and get through to the semi-final and the semi-final will be the top two teams in group a will go immediately to that position and at the moment with neither of these teams in day two with a victory as of yet they need to get something from today and a positive goals for and against ratio will never hurt either as you're looking at the Shiba Arena, 7,000 seats in here, right on the coastal region of the Black Sea, or just as they say, just under four meters above sea level here, right on the door. You could throw a stone from the back of the Shiba into the Black Sea and probably skip it a few times as well. For the moment, we'll leave you there. We will join you again at the beginning of the second period. It's scoreless at the Shiba Arena between Sweden and the Czech Republic. We'll catch you in a few moments' time.
Welcome back to the second period. You, if you haven't been watching so far, this is the score line as you see it. We are scoreless after 15 minutes of stop time play. As both teams make their way back out onto the ice and just not much in it at all. I mentioned just the four shots for the Swedes, five for the Czech Republic. And Kaspari with the goal he scored in this tournament so far against the Canadians. A player that they will look to indeed to I'll try and generate some offense. Pavel has been has been good on that line, hasn't he? Been able to create room for Gear and Sopranic, his line mates. As they have chipped away and have provided well, just some pressure, don't they, in the offensive zone. Nielsen doing his job so far, probably feeling much better about his day's work in day two. But Penka, the leader of this Czech side, isn't he? As he leads that final gathering of the Czech players before the drop and the start of this second period. And Lundgren looks on and I mentioned about Rasmus Lundgren. Rasmus Lundgren made his debut for the Swedish ice sledge hockey team as the excitement of Janssen, the other Swedish goaltender. At the age of 13 did Rasmus Lundgren incredible and he's just only 22 and this is his third winter paralympic games and he and per kaspari very much leading the minutes on the ice and ingrarsson number three for sweden good break right away look at this chance oh my nielsen is tested within the first six seconds of the second period, and Nielsen's ready. And it'll make its way around the corner. Pierre is a real threat every single time. He's got speed, he's got purpose, and he's got talent as well. And he can shoot that puck and run off that drop. Just takes off in a straight line right towards the Swedish goal. Pavel taking a while to get to this one. The reverse works out well for the Czechs. As across the neutral line, this is Berger. Berger with that left stick. Just very strong. Keeping his approach diligent and controlled. There's a jump puck right up at Nielsen. And it just popped up at him. And it came across the surface of the ice, but just deflecting up. And that's the play there from Gare. And Nielsen, good for his money. Gets the chest in the way. Never gets the glove to it. Motichka. And this is the play a moment ago where it just sort of pops up. And he didn't do well because Nielsen was going to struggle to get that out across in front of him. As he stays in his sledge and then takes control from his face off. Now the checks again with possession. This is Pilat. And Pilat shoots it high and hard and up and over the goal. Kasperi, one more time. Look at him work from the outside. <laughs> and Bapenka just takes that one in the old bread basket. And and serves it up like an omelet for the official to take. And the furrowed brow of Lundgren doesn't give much away. Jorgen, Kasperi trying to create something there. And on his own, he can really kind of carry this offensive line for Sweden. The referee not happy with the drop of that puck. They will return to center and do it again. This was the play from Kasperi. Across and Bapenka 
almost unceremoniously just snafus that one and stops play before it even gets a chance to get going. It's out. And it's going to be a play advancing Gear. He can do clever things if he's got speed, but he's upended there. No penalty on the play. And Yom is back. Yom just gets punished for his work out front. There's Gear. There's a loose puck. Sweden can't clear their lanes yet. And Matichka will have to turn and get some support to Franek. Gets taken off the play, but now it's back with Pierre. Oh, what a play to Havel. And Sweden won't be able to get to this one. It's going to go the length of the ice for an icing call. And they will have a face-off to contend with after some momentum being generated immediately to start the second period. By the checks in red and blue, Vapenka. You look at his work so far. As I mentioned before, really much of feeling hard done by the puck in day one. The shot on a 2 on 0 goes off of his mask. And before he even has a chance to recover, it's a bang bang play off the sledge of the Norwegian player. Look at that shot coming in. And it really is something just how wicked their blast and the release of that puck can be by any of these players, but particularly off the face-off from the defenseman who can just release it in a short space and fire with total conviction that they can score from that position. Ingrosin again, he tries it. And it just shows you exactly what we're talking about. Is that's a good play in ice sledge hockey. And it's a good one in ice hockey as well, but not to the same degree as sometimes, well, the goalkeeper, depending on their height and their capability with the glove, well, there is a little bit more room up in the upper half of the goal in which to shoot for. Trying to squeeze it through. And Habu will come back and tidy up the work off of his faceoff. Making his way, just trying to usher that puck up the near side. Again, Ingarsen will just loft that one in the corner. That's the design play as a dump and chase. And Sweden will get to it first. Sparry with good body contact. And the play was still within range of the defender. As he just makes them pay, and now back this four-checking pressure. Well cleared, though, as Ingarsson realizes that he hasn't got much time. And elects just to kind of pound it off the boards and get it away to safety. And we talked about a player who's been around for a while, number three for Sweden, in his fifth Paralympic Winter Games. Thirty-five years of age, and he's a big part, as is Lundgren. I mentioned of this defensive line of Sweden that is able to just do enough, and against a deeper side with more offensive weapons, the Czechs have over the Swedes. They're keeping the score line at goose eggs for each side at the moment. It's impressive for Sweden. As only nine skaters will take its toll after a match already in day one. Here we are in day two. There'll be a, a rest day in day three. And they'll need it in this intense shortened competition. Jalm has taken a penalty though, and Sweden will be having to kill as soon as they touch the puck. And an extra attacker going to be coming out for the Czechs. Available to try to get on this one. They're going to keep the possession as best they can, knocking off the play. Wojciech. And the hand indicated on top of the wrist, which is a holding call. And Yom is going to go and serve it for two minutes or less. And it's 
an opportunity to have a little bit of a break. As now the Czech Republic have a great opportunity with a little bit of a time out here now to discuss this and prepare themselves for how they'd like to approach this power play. And it's effectively like another timeout, isn't it? As you see the well, the customized penalty benches for the Paralympic Games. And that was the play there that has led to the penalty against for Sweden. And this is an area that they're completely comfortable with. They've killed off the one power play that they against that they had to take. They've had an advantage themselves. And they'll take this. They'll find a way. Or will they? Is the question. Stern instructions coming on. So the power play percentage for both sides at nil and the penalty killing at 100%. So good power play percentage efficiency is 25% is pretty good. Anything north of that is a bonus. But this is, the checks the shot there, goes wide. And that's Berger. And Berger has a beauty from back there. And he can just find that through the forest of Swedish trees. But he can't get it to daylight at the end as it goes wide of the net to the left-hand side. Building up and across the line. They've maintained possession, but it's been dislodged. And just enough for a slow return all the way back to Mopanka, who will just volley it out. And they'll come up here together. And it looks a little bit like the flying V here. There's a kind of screen being employed. As Kasperi proves himself a nuisance for this Czech power play, and they ended up forcing an icing, and they have the man advantage, and they played it away carelessly, and now will have to go back in their own zone. As Kavak looking on, and talking about the veteran leader, Kavak, well, he's a veteran as well of sports, other Paralympic winter sports, skiing no less, but took the opportunity to play ice sledge hockey and has never looked back. Through the neutral zone, 45 seconds now remaining in his power play and not much has happened yet. go back to try and again get collection of it. Ingevarsson is so confident from his defensive position he's all the way up there and putting even further pressure on. They've done their job though Sweden it looks like for the most part and they have cleared their lines once again. And out they come in the puck goes. Can they get possession of it and get something from the remaining seconds? At least possession and an opportunity to be in the offensive zone. There's a man who they want to have it with, Pierre. He'll turn and roll and try to get it out front. Chance for Motika. And Nielsen, again, throwing up the big bear pot. Swipes that salmon down and collects it for another faceoff. Watch this broken fly as Motika comes in and right there again Nielsen displaying the leather and takes it to safety. He's got a great glove hand and he sort of leans on it as his preferred goal saving technique or shall we say shot saving technique. Goaltender would say that there's no goal coming, it's just a shot. I'm ready to save it. Sweden 
start to break and create advantage. A little bit of a three on one, but they got to go wide here. Kasperi, and the shot, it comes in from Lundgren from the defensive position. And Kasperi went wide and couldn't get himself back in a position to get to the net. But Lundgren, all the way from his own zone, takes it. And that's as good a chance as Sweden have had. And that shot. Now watch it again. Lundgren uses Kavak as a screen. As close as they have been in this period. Sweden with seven shots on goal. The Czech Republic with eight total. So another team generating a whole lot of offense, of opportunities. Back again, Lundgren. Oh, and he gets hit hard. Sopranic will try and spin out of this defensive pressure and create a chance for himself. He's been unable to. And it's a hand pass being indicated by the official. And that will lead to a face-off in the neutral zone. Line changes for both sides. You're watching the Paralympic Winter Games, the Ice Sledge Hockey Competition. I'm Brent Pope, and hope you're enjoying this match. It's day number two in Sochi. And what a beautiful day it is for ice hockey. We're inside the Shaiva Arena on the Black Sea in Sochi's Olympic Park. It is won and taken by the Czechs. And neither of these sides really pushing the pace as I talk about offensively. Maybe a little of a burst here, still with advantage. Can't get it across, though. They do enough. Sweden just to keep it to the outside and safely out of harm's way. Kubis out front, what a save. Oh, it's still loose. And Nielsen thought it was there in the pile. And he was tidying up the mess. And the crown jewel was still loose. And the puck sat empty on the left-hand side of goal. And they respond just in time. Again, Lundgren having to make a play, get his team away from imminent danger. Kavak lowers the boom in on his player, clears his line. And they'll readdress their shape, needing to get it safely onto a stick. Struggling. Good contact there, though. And a little bit more physical building up. As both sides realize they need to start to push the pace. Something needs to get going. And there are games sometimes that are scoreless as a result of both teams playing well defensively and really doing the best they can to negate the other team's offensive attack. This is one more as a result of another team really pushing forward, trying to generate the offense taking a chance. This was a great play, though. And it's right in front of goal. And that's Grafika. And Grafika. And this is back in front when Lundgren, with that rush all the way down centrally, down the middle of the ice, follows up his own rebound. Lepenka looking to get his glove hand up. He doesn't hide that glove hand like Nielsen does. Nielsen just keeps it in his pocket and pulls it out like a fistful of dollars. Not so much with Vapenka. 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 Now he's just got it right up there, ready to go.
Faceoff is won by Sweden, but they give it away cheaply. Waiting for it here, advancing. He's trying to maybe lay it into an area, but they're just waiting for the timing and the right route to take. Need to be careful, and they have been nabbed. Too many players on the ice, and there is really no opportunity for Brisa to debate that one. He, the Czech coach, that was clear. And the player coming directly on the ice plays the puck. And he's indicating who is going to go serve the penalty. And unfortunately for the Czechs, a little bit of indiscipline in that line change leads to an opportunity now. Now, for two minutes or less, David Motiska is going to serve this one. And you'll watch it here as coming on the ice. Kavok hasn't quite made his way off the ice yet. And the player coming on touches the play and touches the puck. And that's one of the things. If he comes on the ice and it doesn't make contact with him, the referee probably allows the discretion and allows it to continue. But if you come on the ice like that on the line change and immediately touch the puck and get involved in the play, well, you're asking for trouble. And the Czechs have asked for a penalty. They haven't asked for one. They've been given one as a result of their indiscipline on that play. This is a type of thing that often in sport, and in particularly in ice sledge hockey and ice hockey, these types of penalties are back to haunt you. Now, Frieza chatting away with his team, wanting to make certain of their shape and understanding of each other's movement in their defensive formation. And it's effectively a timeout again ahead of his power play, which gives you all of this chance to collect your thoughts and recover and have your best players out on the ice for both sides. But the man advantage favoring the Swedes. Let's see what happens here. The face off to the right of Bapenka in the check goal. It's around and it's a slow read by the Swedes to get to it. They are able to do enough to keep it in. And Ingvarsson is putting the pressure on Havel with a tremendous clearance all the way down the length of the ice. Great power from Havel to make certain of that. Lundgren has to tidy up his own loose work and will make his way. Lundgren turning it over and these are the kind of plays I talk about. A two-on-one developing right in. Wojcik leaving it. Shot. Nielsen makes the save. Havel comes harrowing in there. Like a car without brakes. And he is right now on his own. Playing a little bit of defense in the offensive zone. And Sweden working hard now just to get collection of it and trying to advance it. They haven't done much with this opportunity as of yet. They try to move it wide side now in the offensive zone, Ingersen. And you only have nine skaters. It's getting tiring out there. And Yom just can't keep it in. And all of the work they do defensively to try and negate the other team's depth and energy. Well, it takes the wind out of your sails and the energy out of the tank when it comes time to go on the offensive attack on a power play such as this. Here, comes on, checks close again. Just a moment ago from taking another too many players on the ice. But they can get collection of this. Oh, it's been turned over. And that was against the run of play it looked like at the time. Sweden creating a chance really from nothing at the end of this power play. Through territory, they've been able just to maintain it. But they can't make the play they would have liked. And now territory is relinquished. And the Czechs are back in the offensive zone. Sweden 
having to soak up the defensive responsibilities now. This is it. Berger coming. And Berger is bitten at the last second. And he was trying to put some cheese and bacon on it. And the order was not received by the Swedish chef. And there is the Franek. Trying to just make certain of uh, proceedings. Nielsen has done his job just in time. This is Berger getting ready to go in. And look at that play by number 11. It's the man again, Rasmus Lundgren who gets just the end of his butt end of his stick on that as Berger was about to cook himself up a beauty. Coming up with two minutes remaining in the second period. And they work at it, but not much product. And all the way it goes down, so really creating a lot of profits are they the checks in their transactions so far that was a good chance that they have had a moment ago and if well if both of these teams were bankers they would have a zero balance wouldn't they there's neither team can cash in yet There from the outside, and bouncing, Nielsen getting to it. And difficult when you come out with your sledge first to be able to adjust to maybe how the puck might come off this end boards. But he comes out and is just trying to take it away from Wojtek, who is trying to advance it and out into the front of the goal area. But already there, blocking the passage was Nielsen. Again, a little bit of a flurry of offensive momentum being generated by these two teams in the closing stages of the period. Here is Kasperi, though. Again, released into an area, but he's all by himself. Berger, physically very strong, able to make certain that Kasperi doesn't have more time than would be prudent in the offensive zone. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a lane. He's creating some room. He's got support, but he doesn't just quite have the timing. It's, it's just lifted. Right back in behind goal again. Gier out. Berger from the outside. And the shot. And Nielsen with his preferred glove hand up safely, taking that puck into his possession. Again, Berger and a little chop on the hand by Gier as well, just for good measure, keeping Nielsen honest. Linesman's ready. Puck is dropped. We're closing in. On 30 minutes gone in this match. We're in the final 30 seconds now of this second period. Czech Republic changing the tempo of this one a little bit. And trying to just have a last little flurry. Kind of like a boxer at the end of the round. Trying to get a few momentum points in here. And maybe even a chance for the knockout punch. But it's Sweden in the offensive zone. Late in this one. Czech Republic working hard to protect against the body blow. And nothing again after the second 15 minutes. And Kavak has been physical and strong all day. As is Kubis. The fans are enjoying it. 
And nobody seems to be biting their nails down to the wick. They're enjoying themselves. And Sweden enjoying themselves as well. And Nielsen, a much better day in day two with a clean sheet. The Swedish goalkeeper in yellow just making his way and the long effort to be getting off the ice. And that's the way it stands. And we'll have a quick little look at the total shots in that frame. And so it's 13 total shots at the moment for the Czechs to seven from the Swedes. And Sweden won't be able to do that for long. They might get away with it here against the Czechs. But I wouldn't bet it that the Czechs haven't got a, a goal, possibly two, up their sleeve potentially in the remaining 15 minutes. And the face-offs being won just ever so slightly, the advantage going to Sweden. But after two periods of play, we are still scoreless. And don't you go anywhere. We are watching at the Scheibe Arena, the Paralympic Winter Games, the Ice Sledge Hockey Tournament. And we are in day two. This is match number five in total. And we'll be back after the intermission. They clean and resurface the ice. Have an opportunity to regroup. Get yourself a tea, coffee, orange juice, wherever you're watching. We'll be back for the third in just over 10 minutes time.
and those are the scenes so far in this one but the most important picture is the one you see on your screen right now we're still scoreless after the first two periods and the final 15 minutes or possibly more an extra time period is in store as you look at the famous three crowns jersey uh, the Swedish national ice sledge hockey program Rasmus Lundgren had an outstanding game as I mentioned he and his third Olympic Games already at the age of 22 there's his father the coach Jorgen and Sweden with only seven shots in this game thus far need to press on as they just cannot expect to soak up the continuous forecheck and prowess of the Czechs who have 13 shots they have been the team that are more likely to score that doesn't necessarily mean that they will as the fans are well they're up and at them and they want to will their teams on it's been played in a good spirit this one Yuri Berger He's got a shot that could be the difference in this game without a doubt. And Nielsen's had to make a couple key saves. Vapenka has as well. But it has been Nielsen, as I mentioned, the busier of the two. And I wonder just what is going on in, in that man's mind as he looks out onto the ice. Breeza, though, kind of see that he's just. Constantly in discussion with his players, wanting to make sure that they are informed, situated, and as best as possible prepared to go and perform the game plan. As we are a moment away in the third period of match number five at the Paralympic Winter Games in Sochi between Sweden and the Czech Republic underway it's under the equipment there but it's gone all the way in now and a chance for Sweden to see if they can't come up with possession and this is a weighted well weighted clearance they're gonna get away and go all the way the full distance it does for icing as Berger is trying to get on to the end of it and Ingerson having none of it keeps him from pursuing that puck and the possibility of waving off the icing against the Czech Republic. Frannick done a good job making sure to lead his team and particularly after a difficult day both of these teams in day one having difficulty. Losing is one thing, but the manner in which the Swedes lost, to lose 10-1 as they did to Canada, and also the manner in which the Czechs lost as they came back to level their game. 1-1 against Norway. After probably being the team most favored to score first, and then to lose it in game-winning shots. So difficult. But they are back and at it today and completely with the opportunity to make amends and try to get a full maximum three points. If either of these teams can score in this remaining third period. Gasperi through the neutral zone. A little bit of offense support coming up. And that is definitely a tactic that's been discussed Ingarsson was the player coming up from the defensive position trying to create some further numerical advantage a little bit of width as well as some depth to this Swedish attack this has worked well timing it's looking good for the checks, a shot there from Nielsen here again, Wojtek. That's a great chance too. Coming back just in the nick of time though. And it's forced an icing. 
Berger has been flirting with the idea of a check goal. As Wojcik elevates it. And Nielsen with the good first save. And Kropika, my apologies, with the shot. And it's Wojcik who comes in for the rebound. For another faceoff. And it's one. Again, the defensive confidence of Sweden. Kavak cleverly just using his strength. Got that shortened sledge that he works to his advantage and it creates mobility for the big man back there. Here they come though. Turn and roll. This is a leftover chance for Kopika. And Nielsen, it's still loose. It's out. It's a scramble down a skirmish as we've had in a while. Fans getting excited about that one. You just feel it's a matter of time. And if either team was likely to score, you would expect, as I mentioned, it to be the Czechs. But that isn't the way Sweden plays hockey. They know how to hang right in there, to be resilient, to show resolve. And just when you think you've got them against the ropes, and they've been doing the rope-a-dope on you, they sting you with a jab right on the end of the chin. Does not give it up easily. As he tries to create a favorable bounce on this near side for Oyala. But Oyala can't get to it. So back again is... The puck into the near corner. Lundgren just watching closely, keeping an eye as it comes out across. Scrappy moment there. And it's Pierre. Can't get to it. It is kept in by Motika. Turn and roll. Here's their chance here. It's up. And Nielsen throws up the old butterfly net and swoops himself in another puck and a face off inside the Swedish zone. And it really is uncanny. And I just find the very relaxed and casual nature of the saves made in the goal by Alf Nielsen a pleasure to watch. As he's definitely got an ace card, not afraid to use it. But it's no longer a secret. Whereas in day one, he was just keeping that hidden in his little bag of tricks. And both sides know that that's a strength of his. But all they need is just one, don't they? Either of these sides, you sense that one goal would be enough. This is a great play to block it and to prevent it. Rakos from allowing it to get in on goal. As there was a shooting lane but then all of a sudden, it's like feeding time. And everybody in front of goal. And not a inch of square ice to be, or spare ice to be found. And speaking of square ice, both these teams will be looking to have a few ice cubes in a cold one. If they can get a result in this one. Maximum points is what they both desperately crave what an opportunity for a win even better and a chance coming in from home it's up through the neutral zone and the plays just can't connect can they it's constantly a an effort is made the player is just a, sort of a half sledge length away. The fans are ignited, though. And they are doing their best to ignite both teams to finish this game strong and to really leave it all out there. This is the best tournament in the world. And no matter what the result is, no matter what the situation, again, it's a celebration. And these fans wanting to make certain that the 
players are applying to their optimum and applying with that emotional energy they need to help perform to the best of their ability. This is a real effort coming in. The Techs respond well to the emotion. It's a strength of theirs. Keeping it in. They've got energy. Habo gives it up. And again, it's just in behind the goal. And patiently and calmly deposited down the length of the ice for another icing. And the chant of Shaibu being bellowed out around the Shaiba Arena. So Shaiba is Russian for puck, but the chant and encouragement of to score a goal, to create offense, to really push forward is Shaibu and the Russian contingent and nations from all around the world here inside the Shaiba Arena watching this one. Ingvarsson on this draw, defenseman taking the what normally is a centerman's responsibility to face off. Coming out of this corner though is Palat. Palat may have an option in front. Can he make it quickly? There's a slam dunk trying to come around the near side. And again, Sweden do enough just to lock the door in time. Oh, they found the board first. And Palat takes the long range, and it goes off the Swedish defender in front and through the legs of Nielsen. Watch it again, and you couldn't have planned it. And Nielsen is begging for a replay. And the energy I talk about being generated in the Shaiba Arena, the Mexican wave going around and the crowd getting behind him. Look how pleased his coach is. Great moment. This game will pick up here to the close. Sweden cannot afford to just sit back now. And if they open up a little bit offensively, this game will get itself a little bit more pace and a little bit more possibility to it. And they're going to have to do that now. They can't just sit back and check. Defenders have to retreat, need to be careful. And uh, once again, it's Motika, but he doesn't have a whole lot of support to help him to get out of the zone. And it's assumed that he was just going to get it out comfortably. He doesn't. And Sweden have been able to just continue to put pressure. Working away. Rakoff, who has been a good physical presence for Sweden. And very desperate in his play, very urgent. As any time it's been in an area that He's been trying to maintain possession. He's sort of just, is there a chance for a finishing product on it? Oh, and a chance maybe to have come around there from Berger. Just goes wanting. As Nielsen was just trying to get to that post, but easier said than done. They come out with the control and the quickness required to get that little bit of daylight open and to take advantage of it. Now is a chance here, developing play. Sweden again. Come back and assemble in a campfire position. And they circle the wagons to protect their own goal. But now the Czech side can play defensively. And for just over six minutes, that's not much to ask. Play some defense in the offensive zone. Keep it Sweden as long as they're behind their own goal line. This is working well. It's exactly what Riza has instructed his team. Keep possession of the puck. Let's just keep it in the offensive zone. And again, they tag up on the onside, and it goes deep into the corner. Disconnected. It cannot be completed. Back one more time. This is better. 
The Penka is going to have to take that for a faceoff as Kasperi was coming in. And that's as good a chance that Sweden are going to have now to recover and have a breather during the television timeout. Give themselves, with 5.18 remaining, a real concerted push and try and get themselves into a position to score and level this match or otherwise their opportunity of now to maybe get maximum points three in regulation as you watch the goal again and uh, just possibly open the door for themselves to still be in a position to compete for a medal there you see the smiles on the check bench well a number of the shots that come in from both sides and it's as i mentioned a definite tactic to play it off the back of the defending player in front of goal so it ricochets through your opponent's legs now well, can't say that was by design but you have to be in the area to be lucky and the checks get a little bit of good fortune shining on them there kasparri who goes back on the blue line the forward and in favor to get that shot away it's fallen on to the check sticks and they can just reload here again and now put it deep so force all the swedish defenders back pause and make them have to gap up again and then release it in and it just allows the check for check to be able to take shape and their neutral zone alignment to make certain that they have players behind this puck and it makes it that much more difficult for Sweden to advance it towards their own end zone. Ingrosen again, penned in. Can't get much going, but he does release now, but on his own. And it is a pretty lonely job for Kasperi. Out front though, wow! How does that happen? And Kasperi does it from nowhere. And where were the defenders? It's home. Parks it right in the back of the Czech goal. And home is where the heart is. And Sweden have still got hope. And what is going on there is Kasperi with a perfect pass. It's a decoy. As he goes deep in the corner here, he almost looks everybody off and releases it back. And that is something else. As Sweden defy the odds and level this one straight back at you. And that did not look like developing at all. But it's the play by Kasperi that you think is just going to play it in behind goal. And he just shorthands one back on the near side. And that was absolute master class passing. Well, well, just when you think that Sweden are down, they're not out. And now they're coming and bouncing back. And this would be cruel again for them to lose in such a manner for the Czechs who have looked the better team throughout the day. But looking the better team and having the scoreline reflected, those are often two different things. Sweden hanging around and 340 to go in this third period and now you might have thought it was going to be the match we could be going to extra time again that's a nifty play from the outside Nielsen and that's difficult to make that save alongside of the sledge as that puck could bounce anywhere with Nielsen's feet out in front. And it can go off your toe and up over and anything could happen. We'll be glad to get that under control. This is a play as they almost come back and take the lead within the blink of an eye. Shooting there, a four shot is hard, but it's wide. It's kept in though. And Pierre will come back 
down this left hand side taken right off the play no penalty Ingarsen again dislodged but strong capable possession and a good angle to bounce and to keep this puck in the zone it's under the body and everybody looked as though they cleared the lines but a little too sloppy for the referee and offside being called and there'll be line changes for both sides as we were nil nil looking as though we might go to extra time and it looked as though well Czech Republic are gonna sneak one out here and Sweden answering back and what a goal by Holm Holm was in perfect position but it was the pass to get to him from Kaspari which is just special indeed in it will go and again Sweden spending the majority of this period in their own end zone and a lot of it behind their own goal line patiently controlled to the neutral zone here is that man again Kaspari who goes for a little bit of ride in the corner but comes up with it trying to get it back right. it will be controlled all the way up to Palat Palat the goal scorer for Czech Republic and both goals great to watch for different reasons one because it's a, a great searching effort from a distance and the other one was just so well taken such a carefully crafted out offensive play that didn't look as though it was developing and to make that play particularly to a player coming to the front of goal which is the most dangerous place in the building and to have home be wide open Sweden electing to use this timeout. They want to most definitely get themselves to an extra time period. And because they aren't really a team that that looks to push forward. And you're watching here as we're looking at the board. And this is talking about how they want to be structured and having three players back on their own defensive blue line. And Breeza talking to his players as well, wanting to make sure that they are entirely clear with his message. So the, you hear the voice of Lundgren in his Swedish tone. Wanting to make sure that they don't do anything silly, make any unnecessary mistakes in the closing stages of this third period. That man is holding together for him. Is total time on the ice for Ingvarsson is 29 minutes. Kaspari, 30 minutes. Lundgren, just under 28. Rakos, just under 28. And Marcus Young under 28 so you look at that those five players pretty well on the ice the majority of this game look at this here Nielsen Nielsen just quick to lay down and to get collection of that ever elusive puck Havel wins it clean. Berger is dangerous from there. And it almost is a favorable ricochet deflection again. Dispossessed. Turned over. Kaspari can be dangerous. Berger is back and just collects that puck. Puts it into an area for a moment. He's offside. And it's so loud in here. It's difficult for the players to hear the whistle. You saw the official in the near side with the hand up the whistle actually coming quite late really in comparison to how clear the call was and the offsides generally are called much quicker and they need to be 
precise. But you don't want any sort of controversy of a non-call or a slow decision to be any reason to influence this. Oh, that's off the post. This result. Is this got drama before the end of regulation still? I wouldn't count it out. This is Havel. Havel to turn and look. He'll shoot from the outside. Scrambling effort. Nielsen again. Just perches that puck right off the ice like he's just picking up falling change. And there was no hesitation there, but that's just off the outside of the netting. Wasn't quite the post. Berger. He's dangerous. And this, a good effort as well. Sopranic, almost Sopranic to be just changed the angle of how he redirected that puck. That's a tremendous save. As the only thing preventing that from going in the net was just the glove. And the thing is, it wasn't until late that the direction changed. So Nielsen, incredibly confident the glove was going to do the job, even on the surface of the ice. It's out. And the seconds now marching down. Kubas with a clever move. It's offside, though. He makes the move a little too early. And some equipment adjustment needed as a few fallen players. And Havel just looking up, thinking that could have been an opportunity. And right until the late seconds of these matches, the opportunity in any of these periods, the opportunity to score is quite prominent. And the conversion is quite prominent in ice sledge hockey. As you don't normally see it. You see it sometimes in the last minute, first minute, are the most vulnerable areas in a period where a team is most likely to score. Also, after a power play or after a penalty kill, when you have the advantage or you've had the disadvantage and vice versa. And those are the kind of six areas of a hockey game where teams are most prone. But also in the last 10 seconds of these periods, there's also an area where we have already seen in this Olympic Games tournament goals being conceded. And it's unusual. But we are going to extra time. And we'll have a little mini break. We're going to have five minutes of extra time period, four on four action. And if we are still tied at the end of extra time, that's when we'll go to game winning shots. And Nielsen just couldn't quite do enough to keep it out. And you see just how he felt about that one. And. The long effort in, but we're going to have a look again at this equalizing goal. And it's just a tremendous, tremendous play. As that's the celebration still from Pallet for the goal he scores. And at that point in time, it was possible that that could have been enough until that goal. And Holm, how he got open. As Kasperi goes down, takes out Berger, takes out every man. And there's four Czech defenders, but nobody guarding home. And that's why we're here in extra time now. And in day one, that man there, Bapenka, couldn't quite get it done against Norway in the game-winning shot scenario. He would prefer to avoid it and to have his team just win an open play. There you see the shots, again, favoring the Czech Republic overall in the game, 19 to nine. But it's the goal column that counts. Face-off percentage is almost dead even, 49 to 51. And just a couple penalty minutes each and these teams 
Now only but the thickness of a piece of paper between them to separate them. And this format now is going to determine a result. So both teams getting one point apiece. So they've already got that in the bank. That's more than they had after day one. But who's going to get that all-important second point? Because the teams that come through into the next stage, this will determine, well, the top two teams in each group will immediately go through the semifinals. And then the third and fourth, third in Group A will take on fourth in Group B. And obviously vice versa. Third in Group B will take on fourth in Group A. And whoever wins those games will go for fifth and sixth. Whoever loses those games, obviously contesting for seventh and eighth place. The distance, the shot, Nielsen will take it. He waits for Safrenic to get close. And he then just puts that down and puts it away for a moment and allows another face-off. The third extra time game already in this day two of the Paralympic Winter Games Ice Sledge Hockey Tournament. Ingvarsson can't quite get it out though. Working now. And here comes Sweden. Kasperi almost dispossessed from behind. And Vapenka. And it looked as though it was offside is what the officials were indicating. And wasting no time. Again, Kasperi with that no-look play, isn't it? A little clever, as that was the exact approach he took towards the service he provided out in front of goal for the equalizing goal to Jom. And looking the defender off and wanting them to believe as though he was sort of resigned on his offensive options. And just when you've given him a half trust that he's going to let the play just finish, he actually reignites it again with a tremendously precise pass. Working hard, Pallet. He is the scorer as well. Out front. Sweden cut that out. Well in front of goal. Kavak sees that get past him. And that will go for icing. As it can't be connected. And Kavak, as I mentioned, for a big man back there. Quite mobile, such as the nature of the attributes of his sledge and you talk about the the Czech players and they were participating in the Paralympics in Vancouver comparing some of their equipment i.e. their sledges to those of the Canadians the Americans and said well it was kind of like having a pace car in a Formula One race as comparison to what the North Americans and other nations were using and what the Czechs were using but they all have that top-level world-class equipment now, and it makes a difference in this sport, as you could expect. So four on four is the action in this extra time. Look at Kasperi. I don't know where. Is this going to be the game-deciding play? He misses wide, and he'll wonder about that one. Should they be unable to score and to win this one, Sweden? It's not going to be better than that. That was borderline, just a straight breakaway. Offload, three on two. They've got room. Havel can shoot. He'll turn and see what's available to him. A scramble outside. Nielsen trying to get to it. He can't stretch far enough. It's loose one more time. But now a breakaway. Kaspari is going to have it right back again. From behind, he's being chased. But he is all the way in on a breakaway. He'll shoot and he'll go high again. And he has had two cracks at it in this shift. And he has missed twice. Unreal. As he's the man who's most likely to create the offense. And right now, offense is eluding him. One more time, wide in a searching effort. Goes scurrying past the right post. 
Habel is back. Two minutes now remaining in the extra time. And Sweden, that is unbelievable to have that full ice opportunity and to not take advantage. And if the hockey gods are watching, you start to favor the Czechs now to win this game because you only get so much opportunity and to get opportunity as potent and as available as this was, wow. And there you see the shot from Gaspari. And easy to say from here, but they can't believe it either. And then this here from Nielsen, trying to stretch out to get to it. And it's just a, another arm's length away. And that's when you're totally prone as a goalkeeper, that you leave more of the net available should the opposition get to it first. Look at this play. It's going to go for icing, though. And the crowd just anticipating it. Is Kupika was on it. And Kupika is showing his frustration. You have to wonder how Mikhail Vapenka is feeling. Just whether or not he's getting even further butterflies in his stomach as this game marches down in the extra time period. He said he did his job to the best of his ability, but in the game-winning shots, he was beaten cleanly twice. This is dangerous. And comes out, gets the glove on it first. Yom, right around, just seeing what's also there. That was Kasperi trying to make the play to Yom, and that backhand push, effective, just to get the puck there as soon as possible. And that's the one thing, is the backhand is deployed so much more in ice sledge hockey than it is in ice hockey. And it's just another weapon, isn't it? It's not so much about the real sharp passing with the same velocity in sledge hockey. It's about control and maintaining that possession and the timing and the precision of the passing. And just allowing your teammates to not have to give up momentum in order to link up to the intended pass. It's locked in, it's in a tight space, it's gonna come out. And we have had our fair share of whistles in this match. We've had 58 in total, 59 now, face-offs. Just giving you an idea of just how many times these teams will battle for possession in a 50-50 drop of the puck as we just saw. building trying to get the puck important to take away Kasperi in front still looking to see they're not going to give it away though not without knowing where it's going to go to it's going to be a tremendous effort to try and get it connected to Gear here now and that'll go down for icing and Gear who elected to leave the zone in favor of that long bomb pass trying to connect at the far blue line just keeps the marking defenseman honest they cannot step in and support offensively because as you just saw he was almost gone on a breakaway the other direction from the czech republic being hemmed in behind their own goal line a chance late from gasperi and it's going to be blocked so here we go again we will have the Zamboni come out and resurface the middle stretch of the ice in which to 
give the teams the best consistency on the ice, the surface, so that they can manage the puck as skillfully as possible and without any extra obstacles in which to navigate other than the opposing goalie. So three shots apiece. Both sides are nominating at the moment their chosen shooters. And if after we are tied of the first three, well, we have to go to what they call sudden death game-winning shots. And they'll go back and forth until we determine a victor. But it must be a different shooter than the original three. Should we have to go to a fourth shooter and so on? And they can't go back to the original three until all remaining players have been utilized. Uh, Kasperi having a chat right now with his coach, Lundgren. And you see the tapping on the shoulder and on the body of Kasperi. So you would expect him to be taking a shot in this competition. There you see it. Two shots by the Czechs in the extra time. Total shots in the game, as I mentioned, 21 to 9. Scoreline, that tells the story. We are dead level. And a penny for your thoughts, Mikhail Vapenka. But Sweden, with two chances on breakaways, partial breakaways, pretty well clear-cut breakaways in that extra time period on the same shift. And I wonder how Per Kasperi is feeling about that now as he thinks about the shot he's going to be taking. And that will have a bearing as to how this is going to play out. This was the backhand we were just looking at a moment ago. This was effectively the first breakaway. And then this one, well, it's a shot of the same one. That was off the shoulder. So enough opportunities developing. But it is heart rate time. And Nielsen keeping his wits about him. And you see how he felt about the goal that he did concede. It's all now about focus. It's been a great game. Obviously without the offense that's, not to say we were expecting, but it's turned out to be a very good hockey game and turned out to be an opportunity here now for both these teams to stake a claim at that all-important second point. And as the tournament has gone so far, it's not over yet. The team that gets a, a victory here today Because it all depends what happens in that final third game. And it's going to be Palat who is going to shoot first for the Czech Republic. He up against Nielsen. Palat, the goal scorer in regulation. And off he goes. Clean in on the Swedish keeper. And he is able to do enough. Just stretched out there was Nielsen. And Pallet tried to go from the right to the left and to keep it low on the ice. And goes off the outside of the netting there. And we'll watch this one more time. Whether or not it was Pallet who pushed it forward. 
or whether it just was a touch on it by Nielsen, but it didn't go in, and that is the bottom line. Lundgren, who has done a defensive core's work on his own today on the blue line for Sweden, but now a chance offensively to express himself. Comes in, move, and he misses. And I think he had room around Vapenka. He gave him the shimmy, and it was an upper body fake here. As you see him just sort of clutch that puck. And I think if he had gone low, he might have had a chance to complete the play. Pierre Mikau with a great opportunity here to put a, another goal on the tournament board for himself. He scored in day one. Can he score and have this be the game winner in game winning shots? Oh, what a save by Nielsen. And he goes down and Nielsen is not as big as Vapenka, but he has done well to read the approach from these forwards and that went right off his helmet and Guerre can hardly believe it Kasperi comes out in round two for Sweden you'd fancy him Maybe to finish up the work incomplete. Not this time, though. He's had three. And Vapenka celebrates. We don't see a lot of emotion out of uh, Kasperi. We don't see him visibly frustrated with missing those two chances he did have. And he gets a good shot off there. And it's not like he went all the way down and tried to make a special move and didn't give himself a chance to score. Kupicka with a chance to be a hero. Straight in on Nielsen. He's got time space. What a move that is. Tic-tac-toe. It's in the back of the Swedish goal. And Kupicka may have just scored the game winner. As he is quick to celebrate before he's even fallen as he makes the play onto the forehand on his right hand side. So important. Goals in the bank are king. And now a goal that must be scored by Ingerson. The pressure is on. Here comes the defenseman. Does he have enough still left in the tank? He does not, and the Czech Republic are going to win in game-winning shots. They had their heart broken yesterday in day one, and today in day two, they are able to bounce back and get themselves the all-important game-winning shots victory. Sweden, as you watch Ingvarsson again, it's the glove save from Kapenka. And that is going to be the final. Day one, a 2-1 loss for the Czech Republic in game-winning shots. And in day two, a 2-1 win for the Czech Republic. Again, in the same format, game-winning shots. Sweden, with one point on the board, do get something for their efforts. And what a tremendous goal it was. Then the level to score from home, as set up by Kasperi. But Kasperi will have to think back to those couple opportunities he missed in the extra time period. And as I mentioned at the time, those chances will come back to haunt you if you can't get the full two points that are still on offer at the time when they're most available to you. But great smiles there from Nielsen and excitement there from Breeza, the winning coach for the Czech Republic. That is it for match number five at the 
Paralympic Winter Games in Sochi. I'm Brent Pope. It's been a pleasure sharing it with you. You've watched another thrilling, dramatic game of ice ledge hockey. And the look from Lundgren says it all. That's the final tally. 22 shots to nine. The Czechs were probably the better team on the day. Deserve the extra point. The game-winning shots provides it. That's all for now. We'll join you again soon in Sochi at the Ice Ledge Hockey Tournament in the Paralympic Winter Games. We've enjoyed it. Hope you have too.